Hello, and we are back with part two, and I've got Zoe coming on now. Hopefully, um, the sound works because we had some issues before. So this is part two. Hi, Hello. how are you? <laughs> You're fabulous. I just want to make sure the sound works because I just started a new live stream as we had just had a bit of a toilet break, and yeah. hopefully, um, everyone's going to come back in as well. And will join us because I can't wait. I can't wait to do a bit of movement. <laughs> I have music playing. You can play now. Do you want to play it now? We'll get the people in. Let's see. Let's see. We're all good with the sound. Yes. The sound is good. The good. We're good. Yeah, we can make it a bit louder. Yeah, okay. Girls get in the mood. Right. Let's see who joins us. <laughs> I think I'm going to share it now. So we'll see. We're going to get some more ladies. I love it. I love it. Oh. I love it. So, Zoe, you are educating, inspiring, and transforming people's lives through dance. And what happens is that 12 years ago, you immigrated to Canada to, from Venezuela. Maybe you just want to talk about your story a little bit because you've, you've written it here beautifully, but I think you just, you're much better telling us what happened and, and how you actually came across dancing and what you do. Yes, for sure. So first of all, thank you so much, Marina. I'm really grateful to be here today. And I got up so early and so excited. Oh, you're amazing. And what time is it there now? It's 8.30 in the morning. 8.30. Oh. Yes, yeah, so I was inviting all my friends and uh, they're like, come on. Come on. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much. I'm uh, really, really happy to be here today. And yes, as you were saying, I came to Canada 12 years ago now. It's like unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. Time flies when you're having fun, I guess. So exactly. So it's been quite a journey, a lot of things. And when I first came, you know, I was just uh, looking for something better, something more mm -hmm. uh, exciting, let's say, in my life. I needed a change. And uh, yeah, a lot of things happened since then. I, uh, I was married, I did separate, I started my own business. I was working and yeah, so it's all yes. the learning is still going. As we Fabulous. Know. And just if you do hear some background noises, ladies, this is the salsa. We're trying to get into the mood and Sandra has joined us and Lucy has joined us. And <laughs> you stick with us because Zoe is going to do some dancing. It's going to show us how to, I guess, unleash our self-confidence and sort of our powers in move, right? Yeah. That's what we all need. Yeah. <laughs> To me, salsa is an universal, uh, well, actually, dancing is an universal language, and everybody can really do it. Like, when I think of that, it's because I came to Canada, like I said, 12 years ago, I didn't speak any English at all. And I'm talking right now here. Amazing. <laughs> I do presentations, I do a lot of trainings, I am coaching one on one, and also I do a salsa classes, and I feel really excited because this is something that everybody can do. Get into the mood and feel the music. It's like you forget everything that's happening in your life, even the present moment, and enjoying yourself. It's very, very cool to have that feeling and just have fun. Yeah, really. completely, yeah, so. completely. And and I guess it's about taking the courage and don't worry about how you look because I'm not very self-conscious. I mean, I love dancing forever. I mean, I, I think I would have been a ballroom dancer if I had some sort of partner that would have gone the way with me. <laughs> and my husband's not really much in, into too much dancing, but I, I think it's very therapeutic. Um, and maybe quite often I, I myself, I get quite self-confident conscious because i'm thinking well, how am i going to look and i may look silly so i do zumba like inside um obviously the gym yeah, but then you okay. see yourself in the mirror and it's like and you compare yourself to the teacher it's like 
doesn't quite look like that, but what the heck? I'm just going to have fun. I don't even need to watch myself. Exactly. Just watch her. <laughs> Just have fun and enjoy the music because really it, it's about that. And even you don't think it's a, it's a workout, it's a really workout. You're really moving and getting into it and thinking about this class and it's really, really fun. So yeah. I'm really excited. And actually tonight I have an event, a salsa, a dinner and dance event tonight. So I'm excited for that too. It's all over the city through the summer. I do different events. Mm -hmm. And I invite everybody all the time to come and enjoy it. And, uh, oh, wow. it's, it's really fun, really. It's all about just come and, like you said, enjoy yourself and don't worry about anything else because it's just you, really. It's just here and then when you, like, get out of your comfort zone and do something different, it's when you grow more. It's yes. Like growing and being more, let's say, um, confident about yourself doing things that you want to do and it only takes one step at a time mm. so yeah yeah it is very important to just take the step and come so it's really really right. that's it simple <laughs> so maybe you can teach us some moves yes maybe sure. should we get up okay. right should we all get up <laughs> even if you're watching the replay you've got to get up now you've got to do this come on let's all be good and obviously no one sees you on camera not like like me, you know, you gonna see me now doing. Oh yeah, yes, I can see you from there. Maybe move this down a little bit. I got my. You were talking about pink. I got my pink too. That's oh yeah, you got you got some purple there. Right. So how do we get started? So you start with the left and just that that. Left, right, 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 left, Ladies, uh, yeah, and you know what? If you're watching the replay, I would like to have a bit of fun. Why don't you take a video inside the um, Reach for Greatness with Sabina Mataru? It is a free Facebook group. You can come in, hop in, and we can dance together. <laughs> Wouldn't it be fun? It would be fun, right? It's inside. It's inside a group. You know, I think we can be ourselves inside. A group. So you can come and join and. You know, if you if you feel happy, maybe we can do this again inside my group and we can get everyone dancing and do their own little videos and post it. Or even a picture of how the, how you guys are doing with your salsa, right? Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Oh, Terry is here. Come on, Terry. Suzanne is back as well. And oh, Sandra says yeah. that your English is very good. Your English is very good. So that's brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> your I English is good. good. It's so good. It's the first oh. And, I'm done together, so I'm not and I swear, no, and this is what I like to do. I just like to do things out the box. Why do we have to be like, you know, as I was talking to Terry about this, we don't need to be like other people want us to be. Like, we just want to, we just do what makes fun, right? What, what, because yeah. it's really, this has really raised my energy just a bit on the one turn, right? It's just really like, oh my gosh, I feel so much better now. <laughs> Literally. Yeah, I Exactly, exactly. And I think it's the same with dancing, you know, and I know we may all be a bit self-conscious and maybe, you know, like me, like I'm always thinking I need to lose a bit of weight before I can do some proper dancing and stuff like that. But again, it's, it's about being you now and stepping into the real you now and don't wait until you have a successful business in order to be able to afford or do fun stuff. Just, just to go and do it, right? Because life yeah. is too short. You can't just postpone life all the time. No, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that's all it takes. It takes, you 
just got to have a little courage to say to yourself, like, this is easy. I can do it. If that's all I say to my student. If I can do it, you can do it too. Yes. Learn me. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. And, and I guess it's just keeping that mindset and keeping that, that, that frame of mind, like, don't worry about it. Like, That's you know, right. and, and it's a journey. It's about improving. Like, you're not going to get it completely perfect. It's not about being perfect and, no. and, and, and sort of, yeah, because, I mean, how many years did you have to train to, to, <laughs> to, to make it look really good and to remember your moves? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I trained a lot and I keep learning. I always go to conference where I can, you know, improve myself and then I can show to my students the same as uh, when they, you say, when putting your mindset. To me, it's so important to have a coach and a mentor that can guide you to things. And that's what I tell my students when you come here, this is a class. That's why you're here. I'm here to help you. We're working together and you're learning and just. You know, it's all about practice and doing a little bit every day if you can, or practice as much as you can, and that's it. So we built this, let's say, together. So it's very, yeah. very good. Oh, mm. that's wonderful. That's wonderful. And you also, I see you also an NLP coach. So you actually teach NLP practitioners. So maybe we can talk, yes. we'll talk a little bit more and then how does that all hang together with the dancing? Yeah, so I took some training back in 2016, and I'm so uh, it really completely changed my life because at that time I was going through a lot of, uh, you say, sad moments yeah. and upset about things what was happening in my life. And when I jumped in and did this training, so so maybe like, you just want to turn down the music a bit because it's yeah, distorting okay. a bit. Yeah, I just want to make sure everyone hears. Very clearly. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Fabulous. Thank you. I get excited. Maybe we could do it in the end again. One more round, maybe another move, right? Okay. <laughs> Hello? Okay, okay, we're back. It was just a small glitch. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I, I, I told you they're like frozen too. So yeah, when I took these trainings, it really changed my life. And uh, I learned a lot on how mm -hmm. um, your mind is connected to your body and then how you can change your language, how you can change your behavior and things that you do in your life to improve. So I learned so much and that's how I do with my clients now to I teach them so many different tools and techniques that they can use for the rest of their life to have a better life. Mm -hmm. and to transform their life that they can, you know, just have a little tweak, let's say, in your mind that you can do it, you can be positive, and yes, it's okay to be upset, it's okay to be sad and different, or be angry, or have a little fear, but then how you overcome to those things, it's just how you use it when you put your mindset into like, okay, this is what happened, this is what I'm going to do, and then just move on. Mm -hmm. It's really simple. We just make it complicated, but it's not. <laughs> it, it's it's so interesting, I, yeah, that you say that. You're right. We we do overcomplicate things quite often in life, and we may even make up stories in our mind which may not be even true about ourselves and about our other halves or other people. And I guess it's constantly that voice that's nagging inside you and 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 criticizing yeah. you and and i guess that's where the dancing's coming from like oh my gosh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you should lose some yeah. weight it doesn't look good <laughs> and then yeah. it's funny because we, we let's say as a human we always say things bad about ourselves all the time in our own head and you never say that to people around you you always be polite you always be nice to other people why don't you be nice to yourself you're the only one that is with you all the time. So treat yourself better and then you can do better to others as yeah, well. So absolutely. It's really, yeah, it's important. And to me, I'm very happy because also I see the transformation in my clients when they're, you know, improving and they're just like, oh my God, yeah, this is helping me. Now I see my values in this and my belief and how things are changing. Mm -hmm. And they just grow up themselves and then they know how to let's say overcome different obstacles that come in their life and you just move on and keep going. Yeah. Releasing the past. This is like, yeah, that's key also because we live in the past so much and we're worried too much about that that as opposed to just being in the present and embrace the yeah. past and we move on. You're right. So, 
And then we're taking the bad experiences into the present as well, where, you know, we we failed perhaps, and then failure felt like, you know, we were already disappointed and we still have these feelings and emotions with us. So <clears throat> that we may even now be scared of trying something new because we may fail again and then have those emotions again. Yes, that's right. Yeah, so that's why, again, for me, it's very important to have somebody that can guide you and a coach yeah. and a mentor that you find the solution better. They can, they say, help you to get to those obstacles and say, yeah, you have this, uh, this problem, but this is this solution. You can have this too. You have, like, give you more options that you can look at and, like, oh, okay, this is another point of view, another different way of or solving this problem because sometimes we think it's only one problem and it is one solution. When we look out there, there's tons of solutions, tons of different things, and there's a lot of resources that you can find. There's people that you can go and talk to. The things that you can do, get a book, and to me it's so important to like reading and meditations, all mm -hmm. that stuff is like part of your growing and part of you being um let's say aware of different uh, things that are happening in your life if you're like more focused in it. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah 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 so, yeah it's, uh, to me it's a transformation of my own and that's why i like to share it with as many people as i can i just one person at a time it's all good <laughs> So do you run these online um, trainings um, in LFP as well, or do you do more so, no, um, local ones? No, not yet. Mm -hmm. yet. I will. I would love to start doing online. So now it's only a one-on-one uh, person. Uh, and also the trainings are like live, let's say. You've got to be in the room. So that's mm -hmm. what I'm doing in the fall, actually, too. I'm getting ready to do some trainings in the fall. And I'm excited. I'm doing some dancing events as well. So a lot of things are coming up, like telling everybody, yeah, I get, um, you're going to get a bunch of information. There's a lot of cool things happening. So just I invite you to all of yeah. them. And yeah, it just come to Benny maybe plans to fuse the two, the NLP with the salsa dancing and bring out a new amazing program, which you could maybe do online. Yeah. And actually, yeah, that's what I do. Last year when I did the Dancing with the Stars, and my partner then, uh, we did the local Dancing with the Stars here in Sudbury, and he didn't know how to dance, and we only practiced for seven weeks, and then we won the competition. Wow. I used my tools with him, and we're like, you know, keeping positive, and it's all about practice, 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 and repetition. And just, you know, when you're like focused on something, like, that you want and you commit it to get that point, so then you do it. That's yes. it. So Nothing really stops. Like when you start university, you know, in like four years, you're gonna graduate, or five years, right? So you're going there consistent. It's the consistent that you have in your life to get you there. So this is like that. So yeah, I actually use my tools into the uh, the salsa because I want people to just enjoy the present moment and to be there. So I tell them a few yeah. things and just, you know, get them into the mood. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So tell me a bit more about this competition and what was the journey through. Um, so is it a local competition and you're dancing with, with a celebrity? Yes, it's a local competition. It's, for, it's um, the organizers Easter Seals, which is uh, for kids with disabilities. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, they put this event once a year. So they partner up with say, me as a pro in dancing. Okay. And they give a celebrity, somebody normally that they don't know how to dance at all. And then we practice for a couple of months. And the night of the competition is one night. And then it's a lot of people, almost 500 people can start an event. So wow. it's very exciting. And yeah. see it again, the transformation on that person, like this year too. Um, my partner for this year, he's an amazing, amazing friend right now, and uh, we are so connected. We, you know, it's like you, you get into this journey and you start with the person, but because you're like, you know, seeing them pretty much every day, practicing, and dancing, and dancing, so you become really close and friends, and you just have a friendship. And we do now. We have some Latin nights at Thursday that we're doing together because he's a DJ. And Richie is an amazing, amazing person. And yeah, it's just like, 
all the transformation we see into ourselves as well. Okay. I'm growing as I teach, as I teach wow. them, mm -hmm. I grow myself as well. So I can imagine. Yeah, cause, mm -hmm. cause especially <clears throat> when someone starts something new, right? It may look, you may be doing a few moves and then probably he was thinking, yeah. oh my gosh, how am I ever going to learn this? How am I ever yeah. be able to do this myself? Exactly. And they go like, I don't think I can do this. I'm like, yes, you can. Yes. Take your time. And we're like, you know, stepping little by little. We're going slowly. It's okay. We're going to learn this today. We can do that. And then we just keep going. We just keep going. Like mm -hmm. consistent is key. And just focus and be open to learn. Because yes. Because that's what happened to that. Sometimes it's just, we get in our head. No, no, I can't. I can't. And yes, you can. Oh, we all can do it. Just kind of relax, you know, like relax and enjoy and say, okay, yes. this is one step at a time. I always said that just like building a house, mm -hmm. you need to have a foundation, and then from there you build it. This is the same. Dancing is the same. We start with the foundation, the basic step, basic and basic, and you do it and do it and do it, and then you move on to the other one. So. And I guess if I put my business or well, my business spin on this <clears throat> for women who are actually entrepreneurs and are building their own businesses, I guess it's about having some sort of foundational steps in place. Like, you know, who do you serve? What's your target market? And what are, what's my offer? And initially it just could be um, a coaching offer, something really, really simple or offering a call and just go and do it. Right. Rather than like, I got a per I've got to make everything perfect. I've got to put a website in place first. I've got to have this landing page and this opt-in and this freebie and all that stuff and these email sequences, right? So it's almost like you're looking at the finished article already, like the finished dance steps as it is, as if you would be dancing it right at the end. And then that's really when, when it stops you, when your mindset blocks you and they're like, oh my gosh, I'm so, I'm, I, it's like you feel like you're paralyzed. You can't move forward, right? Yeah. And this is yeah. where you got to actually strip it all back and say, no, it's going to be a step-by-step, -step, right? I'm going to do this section first. I'm going to practice this, these steps and I'm going to already go on the dance floor and just do this. I'm already yeah. going to step out, be visible as, as a business and I'm going to share already my story, maybe do a Facebook Live, like a simple one, for example, right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> Basically it. So just taking one step at a time and learning little by little. And that's how like yeah, it's a really good metaphor for let's say if you have a business. Like to me, yeah, having this business still loves to learn and still growing and putting things in place. Like yeah. Like um uh you were talking to me for uh at the, about the website and how to put all this together and yeah, get all the you know, the simple things in place and then you're like okay this is now i can launch my website so yeah it's one part of the journey is in one part of the business because it is the little pieces or there is a lot to do and yeah it's all about just staying focused on one thing at a time and yeah. then you get to exactly you want to get. exactly and be, and be happy in the space where you are right now not beating yourself up for it yeah that's true yeah. yes very, because very any action it's better than not doing anything and exactly. trying to be perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's it. So exactly. It is key to keep moving because that's important when you're like doing it. Especially as a having a business to me is like always learning, always growing and improving. And oh yeah, now I can do this. Oh, I can find this information with yeah. this person. Oh, I'm gonna have this done, and you just learn as you go a lot, a lot more. And yeah. Just like you said, be happy with every yeah. step and just keep going. Exactly. So that means if you're just talking about steps, should we um do another salsa step yeah, towards the end? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> and just to say, Zoe, yeah. you are available um for calls and I've got the website there as well. If people want to get yes. in touch with yeah. you, yeah. Maybe just um tell them quick, very quickly, yeah. Okay, quickly, my phone number is 705-919-719. My email is pretty much my name, Zoe, zero I, zero I, <laughs> at zoemonroy.com. And my website is also zoemonroy.com. So you can 
feel free to email me. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and all the social media. So, and now here. So <laughs> fabulous. Right. Okay, ladies, if you are ready. <laughs> keep moving do you notice how energy shifts like you are so more relaxed and you know yeah you can co completely get into you know forgetting your thoughts and any worries yeah yeah fabulous wow thank you thank you so much for doing this so i'm so so happy that you came on and you bought some you know, lots of um flamboyant salsa dancing <laughs> and some great insights around the mindset and you know how to build up step by step when you're learning something new and i guess even you with you know, coming into a new country and learning yeah. english it was probably quite a similar sort of journey that you you undertook and you actually had to yeah to take on quite a lot but you had to do this step by step yeah yeah that's true it was uh it, i'm still learning sometimes i still hear new words in english i'm like what does that mean <laughs> yeah me too me too <laughs> it's always a yeah it's an ever never-ending journey and when i come up with some really groovy slang words then people are like oh where did you learn that from <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, fabulous. Thank you, thank, thank you, you so much. much. It was such a fun. Here, all the best, and uh, yes, we'll talk soon. You'll talk soon. Bye. <laughs> fabulous. Thank you. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Let me see. So, thank you so much to Zoe. It's been just fun to having her um, on the show. So uh, we're ready for our next guest, which is Aidy. Um, so whilst Aidy is making her way, I'm just gonna mention as well, all of the replays will be available to watch for about 30 days and then they're gonna go into a paid membership club, which is called the Greatness Club. And you have the chance to be part of it right now um, on, a, on a, well, I'll say the founders membership right now. And there is actually a link in the description, probably above or below the video somewhere under, it's actually, let me just read it. It's learn more about that info slash greatness club. So you can come in and every week we will have ladies come in into the club and we're going to talk about different, different topics. So it's not just about business. And for me, reaching for greatness is not just about building a business. Although I am a business coach and I'm working with startups and um, and, and helping business grow, businesses grow and, and uh, scale as well. But I think for me, it's also about um, me personally. I am a parent. Um, I have two children. So it's about reaching for greatness in the area of parenting, in the area of being a wife. It's about mindset. When you are in business, obviously, it's about having this, this the good mindset, I guess, the sort of don't give up and um, be yourself and, and all these kind of good things. So that's what the ladies are coming in to talk about inside the Greatness Club um, every single week. And all of the Reach Greatness TV episodes also have a playbook, um, which um, actually talk about, you know, give you the, the, the basic nuggets of each of the, the trainings that we're doing here. Um, we're going to have mini challenges. 
um, collaborations are already happening. So it's really a tight knit community um, of entrepreneurs and, and generally of women who want to reach greatness. So if AD is around, I would like to invite AD onto the stage, onto the virtual stage. What I'll do is, AD, I'm just going to message you directly in in the um the facebook inbox with the link to join me in the zoom room whilst ad is making her way into the zoom room which was very quick she's here already fabulous <laughs> Hello. great to have you that was quick so you just need to turn on your camera and i'll just quickly say who you are and then i'll I'll, I'll pass over to you. So AD is going to talk about understanding the profound power of our karmic stories and how to transform suffering through meaning and purpose. And I can't wait because AD is actually, she's in Toronto, right? So Canada, and she's based, um, she's, she's an intuitive, um, I guess she's an intuitive based teacher who helps um, leaders. So am I right? So oh, it's yeah. it's like you're working with with leaders, like with influencers, and um, you also published um, a novel. You're a poet and a songwriter, and you're the practitioner of cellular healing and mother of yeah of three. Did I read that correctly? Yeah, and AD holds twenty years of experience in profound energy work, releasing karmic patterns at the cellular level. And I want to know a bit more about this because I'm pretty new in this and I'm sure the, the ladies on here want to know a bit more what exactly that is. It sounds extremely intriguing. Um, and AD writes here, rising from a spontaneous intuitive awakening in January 2000, her spontaneous writings from an alpha sleep state emerged into conscious transmissions in forms of poetry, spoken readings and meditations. So you actually had downloads right so you know i'd love to know a, a little bit more about the story and then let's talk about mm -hmm. what are cellular uh pattern like ka karmic patterns at cellular level so that would be my second question and ladies if you're watching live please do interact ask questions um and even if you say Edie, you look so beautiful today and i love your flowers and background <laughs> I'm just going to jump in to say one slight adjustment is it's actually a little closer to Adi. Adi, okay, Adi. fabulous. Yeah, it's, it's a French name. <laughs> it's, it's like French name, right? And so I'm Canadian, so ah. I'm, 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 you know, I have my own version, but I, but I, I've been in for the correct notation. It's, it's, it's Adi. Adi, Adi, Adi. Okay, good. <laughs> good that we've got this um, because uh, people said to me Sabine as well, but because actually yeah, Sabine, because it's a, it's um yeah I'm from Austria, so it's like a German sort of name, but. I know. Yeah. It takes some getting used to. <laughs> no, <laughs> Adi, we got it right. Fabulous. Okay. Good. So, thank you so much for having me. This is oh, a so wonderful welcome. thing you're undertaking. Oh, thank you so much for coming on as a guest and, and giving your valuable mm -hmm. time because I see what you do and how you reach out and what you do is just amazing and the, the things that you're creating and just share share the love and share the abundance, Adi. Oh, thank you, thank you. So where would you like me to begin? Would you like me to um, let us, you know a little bit about my story? And yeah, how tell I us what happened in, in, yeah. in 2000 and literally, I mean, it's, it's, yeah. it's an amazing thing that you had this, mm -hmm. this download in a way, right? And then what happened and, and, and also what's, what's the, your vision for the future? So yeah, take us through that. And, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm sure there's okay. lots of different learnings that you can share a part you know inside your story that women can take out of there and, and then realize you know this is things that they can they can actually implement in their own lives mm -hmm. well um the story is an unusual one and not necessarily one i would recommend to others but it was my experience um uh i just a little bit of backstory so my modality is known as the core process and um, there, there is a, what I describe as a parent modality to the core mm -hmm. process known as master alignment. And I was introduced to master alignment in uh, the 90s. Uh, and <clears throat> there was quite a, a small group of us that became engaged. It was initiated by a, a woman called Michelle Anderson who came up out of the States and 
we um, we uh, when I first saw this work, I it was like oh, I was home. I've been looking my whole life. You know mm -hmm. that that impulse of the seeker. You know, I had yeah. been a, I'd always been an outsider. I'd always been a creative. I'd always felt different from everyone I knew, and um, and also highly sensitive. And uh, at first, I thought it was a psychological journey I was on. Um, and then I thought it was an intellectual journey I was on, and then I discovered that it was a spiritual journey and, and all of the above. Uh, so my degree is in English literature. I went um, running off chasing Margaret Lawrence because she was my hero in Canada. She's a, a you know one of our greatest uh, all-time novelists, mm -hmm. and I was blessed enough to work with her before her passing, and she was she was my mentor. Um, but. Uh, there was still a piece that was coming in that, as, as you mentioned, I, I was a, um, a published novelist and a mother and I thought I had a life ahead of me. I was planning to be the next Margaret Lawrence, perhaps the next Margaret Atwood. I had, I had uh, tremendous support. I was published by the primary literary publishing house in Canada and I had a, a whole career ahead of me. Yes. And uh, I was studying Jung. I was reading Jung because, I, again, I was fascinated by layers and depth and archetypal journeys. And uh, one of the things that you understand if you're studying your dreams is that you need to write them down immediately. Mm -hmm. okay. like you can't just get up and go pee and then come back to bed. You lose all the important stuff. You really have to keep your journal right there when you're still in that semi-sleep state to record all the nuanced details. And I have been doing this quite diligently so that I could then apply what I was learning about you to my dream life. And I awakened one morning to discover pages of the most beautiful poetry written in my journal that I had no memory of writing. Wow. And it was very, very different from my own writer's voice. So, you know, I mean, every, we all know our own writing, you know? Yeah. And so and yeah, as, exactly. as a writer, I've been writing since I was two years old. I didn't start writing poetry when I was two, and I, um, it was my passion. And so I knew my writer's voice very clearly. This was not mine. These were not my words. It was much better than my writing. <laughs> Um, profoundly beautiful and moving, although I couldn't really read over top of what I'd written in the dark. Uh, I, you know, because my writing had gone and it was all scrawled and was on top of one another. So I called up my best friend, Ildiko, whose um, picture's on my mantle. There's my Ildiko. Ildiko is, is deceased quite a number of years now, but she was my dearest friend and, and uh, I would say perhaps a, a midwife to my process mm -hmm. for quite a period of time. And um, I called her right away and said, the strangest thing has happened to me. And she, and, oh, read it to me, read it to me. So I, I tried, I was stumbling over because I couldn't quite see what I'd written. And she said, this, is, this isn't you, something has come through you. Wow. And, 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 and I, I then began to sink in. And to be honest, I felt, um, I honestly almost felt violated. It was the strangest feeling to think that something that it was not in my control, that something was in, in my journal, in my bed, <laughs> in my house, and I hadn't invited this. So it was really, really quite, uh, quite an interesting awareness. But I was, of course, fascinated. And so she said to me, if this is, if this is guidance and this is coming through you, let's experiment. She said, I'm going to ask you a question. And I'll make it about a subject that you don't know anything about. And we've been really best friends for quite a while. And I said, oh, come on. She said, no, no, no. There are some things I haven't told you. So she's going to pick one of those things. And I'm going to ask you to receive something about it, see what happens. So I took her question. I held it in my consciousness. I went to sleep. I awakened in the morning. And sure enough, again, pages of information. So I called her back. I read this information to her and she burst into tears. I can still picture the moment so, so deeply in, in my memory, you know, where I was standing in my room and she was sobbing and I said, what, what? Because I honestly didn't really understand what I was reading to her. And she said, you couldn't, you could not have known this. There's no way that you knew okay. what you're telling me. Wow. So you, you show me that I am not alone. You've shown me that there are there are forces, there are there is there's love, there's guidance, there's support that exists all around me that understands these, these deepest matters of my heart and that I can and that, and that it's there for me to hear. And uh, so long story short, we got out and um, she was telling all oh, our friends and I'm going, no. <laughs> and it took me years really to accept it. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, uh, 
in the end, of course, I did. And I, um, oh, there's my screen. My, my computer is going light and dark. It's so interesting. But the light just shone. And, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and so um, from there, I, I mean, I did spend a decade, I would say, of my life receiving in this written form. I did discover that I didn't have to be in a semi sleep state, but I could simply ask and bring myself into a receptive state and receive. And so for many years, and I, I received uh, literally thousands. I, cut, I stopped counting at around 3,000 transmissions for clients all over the world and it's of this nature. Yeah. And then later I was guided to begin receiving in a new way in a very particular kind of energy, which initiated the core work. And this is, this is um, direct energy work where I um, open to a very specific kind of reading and an attunement. And that attunement clears the primary fear-based pattern that we have incarnated in this lifetime to heal. So it's a very, and it, and it comes with a very specific past life story. So it's past life work, but in a, in a, in a way you probably would have never experienced. So it's very different from past life regression. It's a very detailed, lengthy story that is specifically chosen by our guides to represent uh, the life we are living now, the challenges we are living now, where we are in our karmic journey now, so that we can um, be uh, assisted through the attunement to transform in a way that uh, would have taken lifetimes to do at another time on our on the, on, the, on the journey of our species. But this is an assist that's been given to us right now because unless we've been living under a rock, we are aware that the, that the whole world is in a, a process of a deep, deep, deep shift. Yes, yes. Talk a little bit more about this because I know you what you you want to work around that and and this is one of my profound visions and I guess this is where I was a bit enlightened with regards to the reach for greatness I mean if you look at my background if I look at my CV I am a project and process consultant right and I wasn't really much in touch with my own self and your dog agrees <laughs> She's welcoming my son. There we go. She's, rather, she's, rather she's very excited <laughs> now. <laughs> Isn't that brilliant? With pets, yes. they unconditional she's... love, right? Regardless, <laughs> reg regardless, they 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 never get upset oh. with us, right? No, they're the... profound little healers in my yeah, experience. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. it's okay. Hush now. Hush. I need to talk to Sabina right now, not you. <laughs> Thank you. And that's the beauty, so, right? So your background was was yeah, it was brain, left brain. Did you open pretty much? And I opened up, and this is where I had to, yeah, I guess listen to what it was. And it came, it didn't came, come to me overnight. It probably came to me in a few steps. The first step was probably two years ago when the logo was born and the reach for greatness as the name. But then for a long time I, I was in search and I didn't really do much with reach for greatness itself I was continuously you know doing my my old stuff and business related stuff then you know still and and I guess this is where I started to feel something was missing a puzzle was missing that piece was missing and where I started to open up to do some I guess some energy work I guess you can say like to really listen and to um, yeah to do some clearings maybe some meditations and some started some journaling and and that's where it's all kind of come together and it completely unlocked a different world for, to me and it completely unlocked a different uh, feedback from mm -hmm. the outside and you know what I had this I, I journaled about my vision and like how do I want want to be in the world and what do I, what impact do I want to make of course I can't change wars and well not directly we can probably all change and send love and oh, you know obviously we can. Absolutely. it's the energy that we're sending but then we're also we can influence the people physically that are around us like physically or I guess virtually like we, we are speaking and all the ladies that are listening in as well where we can actually cause the ripple effect and and have this mm -hmm. positive um, change you know and out of this what I've created I've now you know think I've now also included some charitable work and say look 10% of the 
anyone that joins the club or you know purchases anything from mutual greatness oh, will go to charity so yeah. there's your the physical connection and yesterday i made this donation because it my heart went out to one of the ladies i was trying to bring on to the reach greatness tv sister seth and um she she messaged me like short notice said i can't make it because i'm literally trying to find a hospital for this nine-year-old girl who had a terrific mm -hmm. burn yes, I and, saw the videos. yeah and 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 her parents locked her in in pakistan to die right oh. and and she she you know i was like oh my gosh this you know i need to support this so i i went on the donation page straight away and i said from all of us here reach your greatness you know we want to support you and it's that and and it made me feel like wonderful right and then she obviously she posted a picture and how you know she that let that girl's now much better and how she's progressing so you know that in essence is really what's life what life is all about and how we can make that impact and yes. this goal comes from what you teaching right it's about listening and maybe writing down dreams oh. and letting it no, come I into you we have to we have to begin with the understanding that we are we're energetic beings primarily and this is this is something that most of us we walk through our days really without that awareness we're very rooted in our three-dimensional our material form we become very attached to our material form but when we when we dare to understand that we are so much more mm -hmm. than this we, we we understand that we can um we can achieve change on so many levels so we may not all be able to be there with that that marvelous woman doing this work with this 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 terrible situation uh, and we may not all be able to um, undertake that level of work in our lives although we can all do something certainly yeah. as you're demonstrating um, but what we do in terms of transforming our own uh, energetic state is actually in, in my opinion the greatest gift that we can give to anyone because uh, you know we're told in the transmissions that that, that the fear, for example, that we release within ourselves uh, touches everyone in our energetic field and it travels yeah. um, throughout time. So linear time is, a, is an illusion. It's a construct that we human beings work with because it's what we're given mm -hmm. <laughs> and we understand it through our senses, but it actually really, if we understand quantum mechanics, it's not how it works. And so when we make a shift, for example, we can touch and heal generations before us. We can, we can heal ancestral trauma and we can heal generations yet to come. And in this way, as we gather together with a focus on our own deepest and most challenging transformation, and we do this together, so I do my work, you do your work, our sisters do their work, we are all contributing to a transformation of, um, that will reach a critical mass that is is currently moving toward critical mm -hmm. mass on the planet doesn't necessarily look like that at times because of the amount of turmoil the planetary turmoil that is taking place but this is what happens this is exactly how um how change is initiated abraham hicks calls it the contrast which i think is a great great way of referring to it um, but we live in a in a in a universe of polarities and those polarities exist for a reason so when we stop resisting those things which we perceive to be problematic or challenging to us, when instead we surrender to the teachings that they offer us, we are profoundly, profoundly empowered. So, um, you know, we cannot uh, ever really appreciate what it is like to uh, have a sip of really really cool water when we're really, really thirsty, unless we have lived extreme heat on a hot summer day. Those two things are both gifts to us. You know, we appreciate the quality of what is given to us in, in the water um, because we know thirst. Mm -hmm. It would not happen any other way, you know, and then the, the inverse is always true. So we can, you know, a, a, a drink of hot chocolate or warm sake when you're freezing and cold and you come in over the cold, you know, that richness, None of us would want to live without that. We wouldn't want to be alive if we didn't have these experiences. But what we tend to do is run from the things that frighten us, the things mm -hmm. that overwhelm us or that operate on an unconscious level, that are, that are the fears that are driving us that we actually can't see, but we know they're there because we experience limitation. 
Mm. So if, if, you know, this is really at the heart of the work that I do. I, I offer um, insights through the guides uh, and of course through my own facilitation because I've, I've lived this work for decades now in order to help people uh, bear witness to recognize and then release the unseen fears and limitations which are stopping them from stepping into their greatness, from, from remembering who they really are. Wow, that's so super powerful, Adi. That's wow. So it's about remembering really who we truly are because we kind of maybe forgotten it. We were a certain person when we were a child, we were fearless, we were limitless, we were full of fun, and we were full of hope and vision to bring that out again. I guess, yeah, yeah, yeah. or maybe we you're talking about were, a previous past, <clears throat> even. Yes, I was going to say we absolutely yeah. were, but even as children, and any any mother who's had more than one child will recognize this. We come in with very strong programming, current yeah. programming, you know. So any mother who's had more than one child, you from day one, you go, "Wow, this one's different." Yeah. You know this. So you might have a you might have a, a rose, you might have an oak tree, you know, and you might have a, a lilac bush, yes. you know, and they are they have they have this journey, this unfolding within them. But and our job is to to make sure they have sun and nourishment and water and to protect them as best we can. But there's no way we're going to turn a lilac bush into an oak tree or vice versa. And that's often a great learning yeah. for parents, yeah, like yeah, for, right. for us as parents. Right? Yeah. I'm just going to go through the, the comments. Um, Suzanne is, is here. She's really uh, enjoying this as well. He says that indeed tur turmoil always comes when resistance exists to change. Mm -hmm. Sandra is, is enjoying this as well. She says it's very, very true. And also Saraj says we're all gifted. We truly yeah. are. Yeah. We are all children, sons, daughters of God, goddess, or spirit. We are here as an aspect of source. If you think of it like this, a, a gorgeous piece of crystal that has shattered into millions and trillions of tiny pieces, that's who we are. And we are all here both to experience that expansive shattering and the return, the coming together. And it's why anything that happens to you happens to me. That anything that happens to me happens to you. And as we deepen our awareness of our own process, this is how compassion is born. This is how we understand others because we are we awaken in our when we awaken to our own suffering, we develop compassion for, for our the, the mm. self that we see everywhere around us. Wow. Mm. And and this is so interesting that you're talking about this. Um I because I was just reading with my with my children the other night. Um, and I posted about this. It, it, I think it was like planets, um, space and planets. It was a it was a scientific book, and literally they were besotted with this. And that's just sort of realizing that you know Earth is really just a small, a tiny part of the whole universe, and that you know we're just a tiny speck on Earth as well. And what it said in there, and it just made me think, like um, Earth is positioned in this um perfect perfect distance distance away from the sun so that it actually you know um can 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 accommodate all the growth and the water because what could happen if we would be closer like i think mars is closer or venus <laughs> we would boil and yeah and one of the other ones see i'm not i'm not having good in science but one of the other ones we would be frozen either water would be frozen if it would be um too far away mm -hmm. from sun and then otherwise if we were you know too close if we would boil so that life the life wouldn't really exist in this format that we've got right now so i'm thinking like oh my gosh what are the chances that earth is positioned as earth is as it is and that we exist and well you know to be sorry uh, one, one, of, one of the great um, gifts that I'm given from the work that I do where I, um, over the years, for hundreds upon hundreds of individuals, I have connected to and heard about their past life journeys, their soul journey. One of the things that we really come to understand is that there's nothing accidental about any of it at all. There's nothing that is, um, there is, there is not, there isn't a single thing as a, a random experience in our, in our universe. And so that, what you just described to me is very beautiful. It's, um, I see that as a kind of a, <clears throat> excuse me, again, a linear grid. So we've got 
the sun here and the planets like this and we're experiencing you know it's a different experience and we land here in that perfect distance that allows us to be who we are what i've been shown over the years is that there's a there's an image the image that's given is that of um of a, a grid so if you can picture um a fisherman's net that has been cast out over the top of the ocean and it's, so it's lying like this on the on the surface of the water and then you were to take another and, and of course the net is made of all these many tiny crisscrossing lines and then you take another one that is dropping from the sky and it's it's going like this and it has all these lines going like this and then you take another one and you put it on the diagonal and then another one on the diagonal here and then another one on the diagonal this way and you keep intersecting these this <clears throat> these are the impulses and these are all infinite by the way there, there isn't a beginning and an end to any of these this is which is beyond our three-dimensional minds to really yeah. understand uh we understand it when we're out of body but in body it's a bit more difficult so and when we choose to incarnate, we actually pick one spot where all these threads interact and connect, and that is our moment. And these threads will go back through our ancestry, they will go forward into our soul future, they will go into our um, the geography of where we choose to be born, they'll go into our culture, they'll go into our religious history, they'll go into, um, uh, and, and most um, above all, they will connect us to that part of ourselves that wants to expand and that is prepared to grow into the fullness of our divine nature. And we need the lessons that are given to us. We need every single expression that is offered to us. There's perfection, including and perhaps especially the experiences that are deep challenges to us. That difficult person we work with, the, the, the challenge we have in our, in our marriage, um, our children, our neighbors, um, the conflicts we have with our work, uh, the health conditions we experience, um, the, the limitations that we discover financially, emotionally, psychically, spiritually. None of these are mistakes. Every single one has a purpose. And when we can tap into that, everything changes. Right. We're profoundly empowered. And here's the best part. You can never be victimized again. Because no one ever has power over us once we discover the choices that we have made and the choices that we have to move forward in our lives. Wow. My gosh. That, that's, that's something. I now need to re-listen re to this again. I and mean, this is just amazing what you said in a couple of sentences. <laughs> And it's it, a yeah, lot. you could keep it's talking a lot. for a long time. To be <laughs> but it's amazing. It's just so amazing. And this is what you help women with, right? It's to help yes, them align. Yes, and men, absolutely. And white men as well, children, okay? Uh, yeah. Yes, exactly. The core work especially is a, is a very profound way because you're given, you're literally given a blueprint to your soul journey as well as an attunement which clears on a cellular level these patterning, these fear-based patterns from your DNA. And so it's a program that I offer because this is very intense work. It's not for everyone. It's for those who are really ready to go deep. And right now, actually today, I'm closing. I have a very special, very high off level of this offer. Uh, then the, the registration is closing today. Um, it's for a mastermind. It's called the OM program. So it's an online mentorship and mastermind. Mm -hmm. It's it's very intensive work with me personally. In my program, I have uh, fellow associates who are practitioners and trained and brilliant, brilliant individuals. And there is it's possible to do this work at at, at a quite a range of price points. So you're welcome to to give me a call, and I'm, mm -hmm. I can lead you through all the options. But especially if you're interested in a high level. Uh, private work with me. This is a very special offer that actually I will not be doing again. I'm moving toward um, retirement from uh, the kind of intensive one-on-one -on -one work I've been yes. doing for 20 years. So um, it's at a it's it's a very special offer, and I do still have a couple of spots. I can imagine. Fabulous. How do how do the late lady or a gentleman as well? How can they get in touch with you? I've got a website um, posted, but I'm not sure. Is it on your yeah, website? Or, yeah. Worldwithoutfear.org is the website world without fear community is my facebook group my public facebook group and i invite anyone who's even the slightest bit curious to come and join us there you're going to get lots of fabulous information but also just this beautiful community of awakening souls you may write to me directly at adi a d i at adikanda.com a d i k a n d a dot com and you can certainly find me on facebook i check my messages quite frequently i have both um 
a professional page and a timeline. It says Arikanda World with her peers, my professional page. So fabulous. I've just posted that. Any one of those ways. It's in it's in the comments as well. So yes. Um, and one is just really quickly the one thing that I am offering right now for individuals who are interested in applying to the own program is you can have um, a, an exploratory twenty minute meeting with me, which I don't do very often. So it's a chance to come on a call and you will, I will actually connect to the guides and you can, we will ask the guides about the appropriateness of this work for you. Wow. That's amazing. So you can be really reassured. It's not about, you know, you, you want to, you want to work with the right people. Exactly. Yeah. It's very deep work. It is not for everyone. Mm -hmm. It requires a tremendous spiritual courage, but it is in my, my mind, I don't think there's anything like it. I've, I've looked a long way and it's a very, very special and beautiful option. Okay, Martin. Fabulous. Thank you so much. I'm just reading the last questions. Um, yes, yeah, Suzanne says that she loved my question from before. I guess we were talking about the universe. And um, she was asking, what about the persona souls uh, we get attached to along the way? Yeah, so I guess when we go through the life journey, we kind of meet people, I guess, and it may not be a coincidence that we on this call today. Oh, of course not. No, there are no coincidences. <laughs> <laughs> It's all purposeful and it all has meaning, which is the, which is one of the great gifts of this kind of exploration. Because when we understand the meaning within something, it literally transforms our suffering. It literally transforms it. So think of the difference between a woman who's giving birth in a, in a loving environment where she knows exactly yeah. what her body is doing and she knows she is held in love and safe. And, and a woman who's having a car accident, the actual pain level, the physical pain level may be an exact match, but the woman giving birth can, tra can utterly transform it. There's, there's videos on YouTube now of women having orgasms while they're having babies oh, wow. because they have so developed this capacity mm -hmm. to trust and sink into the physical process. Yes. So um, wow. I, I don't quite yet do the orgasms during childbirth thing, but I teach just about everything else. Yeah. <laughs> Find thank you thank you so much adi i really enjoyed my having you and so you know ladies um, i guess my audience is more like ladies but even if you are a gentleman you're watching you're so welcome to join adi mm -hmm. and her program is closing today so you know i'm sure when they if they even if they watch replay for the next couple of days they might still be able to, to oh, yeah, well, the other levels of the program are opening, okay. um, uh, ongoing this is a okay, nice fabulous. special offering from me today so just and just reach out you don't have to decide today but we yeah, can connect if fabulous. You're interested. thank you thank you thank, so much thank you so much sabina lots of love and you too bye bye so uh Wow, that was Adi. That I do what I'm saying. Adi, 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 Adi. It's Adi. I love her so much. So thank you, thank you so much, Adi. Um, this is the last slot. Last but not least, um, the beautiful Sandra is going to come on, and I'm going just to send her the link, um, so she can join me directly in here in the Zoom um, room. So Sandra, fabulous. So. If anyone's interested to come into the Greatness Club, where we all are great women who are reaching for greatness, where you have access to all the replays of all the Reach for Greatness TV episodes from the past and also the ones that we're going to do in the future, which are always like, like three hour amazing kind of trainings and where we actually are you know together we're doing weekly trainings as well on all kinds of topics. So hi, Sandra. I'm just um, going to introduce you as well so just saying that all of the replays are in the club um as well in the great list club and sandra already joined as well and, and um is enjoying obviously the community and sort of being visible and the supportiveness of all the women that are in the club as well so i'm so super excited having you Absolutely. how are you <laughs> that is super cool isn't it i mean it's so super cool that we can have this conversation and like going zooming in and out of people's front rooms without actually having to travel isn't it amazing yeah wonderful. i love it i love it so let me just introduce you very very quickly this is my duty as as being a good host um so sandra saunders we are going to talk about um I de we are going to um, talk about how we can identify the words that we say to ourselves and how they affect our behaviors and outcomes. And now Sandra has studied personal development for 10 years and has gone from extremely low self-esteem 
to yeah. from low self value and barely yes. no confidence into a fantastically confident and beautiful woman all in red which i love i love <laughs> bright colors <laughs> and now you feel so empowered to take on challenges of life and with confidence and i think this topic so much resonates with so many women and it resonates with me because at some point I had really low self-confidence because I became a mother and I stopped working and then I was so super aware of the fact that I wasn't really you know gonna fit in as it was before I wasn't the same person anymore I, my attitude had changed my my feelings towards work and, and being in that environment and and also I guess self-confidence has sort of dropped quite a bit because I was out of work for quite a while so and it can happen probably any time in your life and this is you know how we we can pick ourselves up because it doesn't need to be that way absolutely absolutely and so just to give you a little background to me um I 10 years ago I was in a spot I was in a really bad marriage I had two very difficult teen kids uh, with with mental health issues and ADHD and anxiety and a whole bunch of challenges. And then my youngest son was looking about the same way. So I'm like, oh gosh, another, you know, yeah. 15 years of this too. Um, I was on uh, anti-depressants. Um, I was depressed. I had extremely low self-esteem. And it's ironic <laughs> when those, those kind of um, pivotal moments, those defining moments come to you. I was sitting actually in my stepdad's funeral and um they were talking about how he liked to chop wood and the whole eulogy was about chopping wood and not to negate who he was or anything like that but i sat there and i kind of thought wow 67 years on this planet and your legacy is you like to chop wood and for me i i didn't want that for me <laughs> i yeah. sat there you know, in the state that I was. And I said, I made a vow to myself that no, I wanted my life to count for something, right? Mm -hmm. I wanted to leave that legacy for my children, like so many people do. And so I, I made a vow that I would do that. I didn't know how I was going to do it. But two, literally two months later, I was introduced to a leadership development company. And literally, my life changed. So I've read like hundreds of books on the topic, thousands of audios and videos wow. and, mm -hmm. and hundreds of seminars and conferences and whatnot that has brought me to this spot. But what I want to do for you guys today, because I really want to help you identify issues, okay? So I'm going to ask everybody, and you can do this as well. Yeah. It's a little exercise that we're going to do. So if you could take just a sheet of paper, and I want everybody to draw a boomerang. Okay. okay. And I'm, I'll just grab my bits and pieces. Okay. We all know what a boomerang is, I think. <laughs> um, I actually do have a boomerang. Oh. Shall I go and get it? Oh, you got one there as well. Use your paper. I'll get my boomerang. I need my boomerang. <laughs> <laughs> so while she's doing that, I'll tell you, you know, the key with a boomerang is when you throw it out there, it comes back to you, right? And so this exercise is going to be really great at helping you define number one, what you throw out there, and number two, oh, that's awesome. Awesome. I love it. I got this um, when I was in Australia. I was touring Australia with a friend of mine um, in probably Ayers Rock or something like this. Beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, really beautiful. Yeah. So, okay, I'm ready. <laughs> so, draw a boomerang on your paper. Yeah. It doesn't have to be perfect or anything. Um, and then on the front just put a small little t somewhere so we know it's the top of your boomerang okay and so what i'm gonna do is i want to take everybody kind of to a spot of in your in a perfect world so in your ideal world what are the words what are the things that you desire people to say to you in an ideal world if you were perfect they were perfect blah 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 right what are some of the things that you desire for people to say about you 
And I'm going to go through and I'll list a few just to give people ideas and to brainstorm kind of thing. You are beautiful. You are sexy. I'm really comfortable being around you. I feel very at peace when I'm in your presence. You're very worthy. I am so proud of you. You are an incredible mom. You're so grounded. You're very patient. You're very good at, and then fill in the blank. You're so compassionate. I love your heart. You are so incredibly loving. So write these on your boomerang, on top of your boomerang. So does it matter where, inside the boomerang or? On the top, as long as it's on the top of your boomerang, it doesn't matter. Like outside of the, because what I did is I, I literally added this. Yeah, right inside. Oh, inside here? Yeah, all in there. Okay. You want to write it randomly, anything that stands out to you. So I find you very inspiring. I'm so glad we met. Um, I'm happy that you've come into my life. I'm so proud of you for blank. You are so loving of yourself and others. I respect you. You have a phenomenal smile. You have great hair. <laughs> so put things that have to do with, you know, your body parts, what you desire to have your husband say, maybe things that you want your, your boss to say, like, I'm so proud of the work you do. Or maybe things that, you know, you'd like somebody to say, you rock girl, you're an awesome entrepreneur. <laughs> right? So what we want to do, and people can add to this later on, because I don't want this to sort of drag out. So anything in an ideal world that they desire to have people say to them. Okay. Now, the next part is I want you to flip your boomerang over to the bottom. And so, this one's a little more uncomfortable. What I want you to do on the bottom side is I want you to put all the negative words that you say to yourself. Your internal dialogue that all of us have your limiting beliefs, so maybe I'm ugly, I'm fat, I'm stupid, I feel unworthy, I'm not good enough, I'm not capable to blank, I feel alone, I really fear talking to you, I always mess up, I always make mistakes, I'm not worthy of love. Mm. I don't like my skin. It's this way or that way. I always seem to attract the wrong things into my life. Bad things always happen to me. I couldn't possibly do blah, blah, blah because of whatever. Right? I'm so sensitive. I'm such a loser. So I want these to be on the bottom of the boomerang. And so what this actually, this exercise is to do is what it does is it draws out really on the bottom side what your negative self-talk and limiting beliefs are. The top side, we'll get to that in two seconds because I want to explain something about brains and how they work. And so you have a conscious brain and you have a subconscious brain or mind, I should say. So your conscious mind fires at 2,000 neurons per second, but your subconscious fires at 400 billion. Wow. So just absorb that for a second. So I always keep one of these around because it reminds me. So it's kind of like an elephant is your subconscious brain. It's huge. How come we all got the same thing? I don't know. <laughs> go. <laughs> I always have an elephant because it reminds me. Boom rise an elephant. <laughs> so your subconscious mind is like an elephant and your conscious is like a little tiny baby ants on this huge elephant. We all are wired to try to think and do things with our ants. <laughs> yeah. Why? Why are we trying to do this? So 
The problem is, is that our subconscious or our outfit thinks in two things. Pictures and patterns. So pictures, for example, if you just ate turkey dinner and you're literally sitting there with the top button of your pants undone, you're watching TV, the five commercials for pizza come on, you want pizza. But you're stopped. Yes. <laughs> that your subconscious mind saying, I want pizza. And it will do, it'll charge to get pizza. You know, if you have the energy to get up off the couch, you go get pizza. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Because your aunt will get bowled over by your elephant. And so the other thing is that your subconscious mind thinks in patterns. So words create thought patterns and thought pictures. So they become pictures in your head. So that's why when somebody's telling you a story, it might be a little discombobulated. And you're like, I don't get it. I'm just not dragging. It's because you can't paint the picture in your head. They haven't given you a clear description, right? So words that are said to you over and over. So I have a friend that I'm always coaching, Sarah. And so Sarah will say, well, I don't understand why you asked me to do this. I'm like, well, Sarah, um, why do you think you're stupid? Well, that's what my parents told me. Right. So it's a repetition and it formed a pattern. Mm -hmm. These are neural pathways in the brain and they are actual thoughts in your brain that are caused from repetition, right? So hear it over and over and over again, I must be stupid, right? Yeah. And so the, the, what you have on your boomerang and the bottom part of your boomerang are those, those limiting beliefs, those negative self-talk. What you have on the top of your boomerang is your destination. This is yeah. where we need to program your elephant to take you. Do you think this is something that we can do with our uh, children? I mean, my, my children are in, in this age where they pretty much, you know, go, th go through challenges, let's say, in, in, in the school as well. And, and other yeah. children are, um, you know, saying things about them, which they, they come home and they kind of start to believe th ab about themselves. And, yeah. and then it shows when they are sitting there trying to do homework and then they're like, don't know what to, what to do, how to do this. And, I, I guess I'm just making the connection thinking, well, if they think they're stupid because yes. someone else said, said so, this could be yes. kind of maybe a fun game with them, right? They just absolutely, absolutely could use that boomerang and say, let's do this together. Yes. Absolutely. And ironic, it's ironic that you said that. We're, we're really tracking today. <laughs> because I want to do this exercise in schools. Right. Yeah. But I want to do this exercise in schools because I think it's very powerful to get, because they don't know what they're writing on the boomerang, right? And so if I wrote on the top of my boomerang, you know, um, I am the best mother on the planet, <laughs> but on the bottom of my boomerang, I am a failure as a mom, yeah. then there is a huge gap there that needs to be closed. And that's where I need to work, right, is on that. So the, the thing is with, with what happens, because it's a loop, it's a pattern loop that we've caused in our brain, we need to do introduce disruptors. So mm -hmm. you can teach your kids this, how to do a disruptor. So usually it's best if you name it. So I used to name mine Negative Nelly. Right, right okay. No. Yeah. As soon as I have a negative thought come in my brain about myself or a limiting belief, I, if there's nobody around, because you don't want to do this if there's a lot of people around, <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> like really loud. Because what it does is your loop, if you picture your loop and it's kind of on a track, well, if you think of a train, the, you don't need a bomb to derail your train. You only need a little penny, right? Yeah. It caused the train to go off the track. Well, that's the same thing, thought pattern. All you have to do is cause a disruption and it derails your thought pattern, right? So, whoa, Nelly, works. And so I used to have to do it out loud, whoa, Nelly. And then I started doing it in my head, whoa, Nelly. And then all of a sudden, it just, the thought would start to come mm -hmm. and then I would automatically derail it. And I don't know how long that trans, trans, um, how long it took to transpire from saying it out loud to in my 
not even needing yeah. to say it. I couldn't tell you, but I know now when and if I ever have a limiting belief, I nip at the butt like that. Yeah. Right. It's squashed very quickly. So pattern disruptors are very good. Um, so you can use the naming it and the whoa, whatever, um, to get you starting new thought patterns in your head and start new loops. Affirmations are huge. And I know everybody talks about affirmations, but I like to talk about why they're huge first before I tell you about affirmations mm -hmm. because like my friend Sarah said, I just don't understand how it will help me by me saying to myself, I am smart over and over and over again. And I said, well, you got to feeling you're stupid because it happened over and over again. Yeah. You kind of it's telling yourself in your head over and over again, oh, I'm stupid. Oh, now I, I prove it again. I, I just embarrass myself again. Those are kind of negative affirmation, but you probably won't call it affirmations as such, right? Exactly. Exactly. So you need to start getting positive affirmations. So I had to really work with this because for me being in that low spot that I was in, to actually look at myself in the mirror and even say the words, I'm a good mother. I was like, my energy was like, um, uh, yeah, I'm a good mother. <laughs> you got to do a bit of salsa dancing. <laughs> As we talked to Zoe earlier. Um, exactly. Yeah, you got to raise your energy. And I guess you need to say it in a way so that you actually believe yourself. That's right. And repetition will get you there. To the point that before I went on the slide, I was in the mirror going, you are a rock star. <laughs> yeah, right? exactly. Right. And the other thing, I guess, is if you don't believe yourself, then just write down and it's like um, force yourself to write down 20 things about you that you love. That's what I do with my clients because they come and they say, oh, I'm not sure, you know, feeling not worthy about being in business yeah. or not being able to do what they want. And I was like, okay, write down 20 things that is amazing about your offer and what you can offer to your clients. Right. Perfect. And, and it, 20 is quite a lot in a way, but it really forces you to dig deep. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I do a similar exercise. I call it the mirror exercise. I do what are five things that I'm proud of, of myself. Like five things I've done, I'm proud of. Five things I forgive myself for. Because mm. forgiving yourself is very, very key. There's a lot of people that can't forgive themselves and they can't move on if they can't forgive themselves, which is a shame because they're, they're holding themselves back. They're holding themselves hostage, really. So five things I forgive myself for, five things I'm proud of, five things that I'll commit to. So, and it could be just little things, you know, start off little. Like your, your subconscious mind will take you to these places but if they're big, gigantic steps, they, they, it just can't fathom it. It wants to like, show me the money, baby. <laughs> Let's see yeah. the little income, right? Along the way. Five things that I'm grateful for in my life. And that's got, that's very key. And I ask these things each day, right? Each morning when I got up. Now I did the gratitude at night. And there's some nights because I was going through very rough time, things didn't change overnight, is the only, you know, I try to list the things I was grateful for, but sometimes just having clean sheets made it on the list. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or that I simple. Up. <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. You're you're right. And sometimes we just take these things for granted. Absolutely. Or having a good conversation with somebody. Mm. That's value, right? That's there's a lot of value in that, right? Connecting with others. Yeah. Um, and sometimes I'm just grateful because I've had times where I've been coaching people over the years that I've had a really bad day and I'll see my phone ring and it's so-and-so and I'm like, oh, I know that I'm having a hard time with this. I'm just not feeling like it today. But I push myself to say, because that's a negative belief in my head that I'm not ready for. Mm -hmm. I can't handle this today, right? That's a negative record. Whoa, Nelly. 
pick up the phone. Inevitably, after a 10 minute conversation with somebody, I felt better about my situation, <laughs> right? Because often when we're coaching people, the words that are coming out of our mouths, we need to hear as well. <laughs> yeah. Right? You're right. So, quite because quite often I I say those things to my clients. I'm thinking, well, hang on. Do this exercise yourself as well. <laughs> Or remind yourself of that. Yeah? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. you're right. You're right. And then five things that you value about yourself. So if it's simple, like, I like my hair, you know, <laughs> write them. Mm -hmm. Because I think in our world, we've, we've um, and it depends on how you grow up. Here in Canada, we're taught to be humble. And I know we were just talking about this at an event I was at yesterday. And being humble is great. But you know what? You also have to step into your greatness. You also have to acknowledge what you are good at, what, what skills you do possess, what attributes you do possess. Own them. You need to own them because then it gives other people to step in, a permission to step into theirs too, right? So it's finding that kind of balance between confidence and being humble i'm humble i'm humble because i'll i hear what other people have to say and i don't judge them mm. i'm humble because i don't i don't always think that i have to interact and say they're wrong <laughs> you know what i mean or 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 i i can allow other people opinions yeah. that you know that humble yeah but accepting my own greatness that's healthy <laughs> it's almost like when when you get praise and it's about how how do you take that positive feedback allow it be humble i guess yes. don't be you know like conceited and say yeah i know i'm great yeah you don't have to tell me that <laughs> and sometimes it's the other opposite where when someone tells you you know oh you're so fab so fabulous you know ah oh, no 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 i'm not Right, that's, that's the opposite. It's, it's about allowing and say, oh, I really appreciate that you're saying, you know, I'm so humble that you say that. I, I really do my best and thank you so much. I needed to yeah. hear that or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Mm. I know years ago I had a mentor who had complimented me on something and I, I kind of poo pooed it. I'm like, oh, blah, 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 blah. Because I wasn't there yet, right? I couldn't do it. I couldn't take the compliment. And she looked at me because she we had a good relationship and she could do this. So you have to make sure you have a good relationship. She goes, why did you just throw my present on the ground? And I went, oh, wow. And because ultimately when somebody is giving you a compliment, it's a present yeah. that they are giving you. And if you poo-poo it, yeah. <laughs> you know, you're thrown on, on the ground. Like, how rude. So after that, I now, when people say I like or they compliment me, I just go, thank you. Yeah. You know, and have this broad smile. And I accept it because that's, yeah. and the broad smile back to them and saying thank you is my present back to yeah. them. Yeah. Right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I love, yeah. I've, I love, I love everything you said. I love your exercise as well. You seem to be very, very practical. And I know you've got the Confidence Academy as well. So can you maybe talk a little bit about that yeah. as well? Yeah. Yeah. I, so it's, it's called Bondage Breakers Academy because I want to break you out of the bondage that we're all in, right? From our negative beliefs and negative self-talk. And so it's going to be a four-week online academy. It'll be done in a private Facebook group. And um, we will go through exercises similar to the boomerang um, uh, talk. I call it the boomerang talk. Uh, there will be uh, numerous downloads. So, so far I have like 10 downloads for people, worksheets. There will be tracking sheets mm -hmm. so that people can track, give themselves points for different things. So if they did affirmations and all these kinds of things, the top five winners, because there'll be a leaderboard each week, and the top five winners at the end of the four weeks will be given prizes and one of which will be, you know, some coaching time with me, personal one-on-one -on -one coaching time. Um, there will be daily inspiration. I will do a minimum of three live videos in there um, each week. There'll be a set time so people can, you know, mm -hmm. kind of 
plan around them. Um, and um, the neat thing is, is I want to start it while the sun is shining, I like to say. Yeah. And that is, I'm going to uh, open it up. It'll be opened up on June 17th. I just, I have to work some stuff out with the, my website designer and whatnot. And as soon as that's live, yes, um, people can register. And um, it, the course, the actual class, will start on Sunday, August 19th. Okay, so, brilliant. So can people um, pre-register or maybe get in touch with yes. you directly when once they see the show and obviously at least you can connect and maybe um, do you have a place like a Facebook group or an email list, there's a wait list where you can send them in near yes. the time some more information? Yes, I already have numerous people on the wait list mm -hmm. that are pre-registered, but if they send me a message and I'll link my Facebook page, my business page, in the comments down below, yeah. um, they can go in there and they can shoot me a message in there and I can put them on the list to pre-register. Um, I also am going to throw out an affiliate program. So mm. let's say you're interested in the course. If you have five friends that actually sign up for the class, then you will get yours for free. So I'm going to um, put this link in the comments now so um what is it called again the, the um okay so it's it's um uh, my personal page is i've got it i've got it it's just to uh, register for the um the program or the interest for the say it's called bondage breakers academy bondage breakers academy And there, I've got your business page link. So best, the best way to do this to register your interest so that you can get all the information about um, the investment and what, what it's going to be like, what it's going to look like, starting, um, timing, and so on. It will be on Sandra's business page, which I am just posting now. So it's about sending a message directly to you on, on that page. Wonderful. Fabulous. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming on, Sandra. I've so much enjoyed this exercise. I'm going to actually continue writing this and, and I will do this with my children as well. I think it's a wonderful idea. Teach them affirmations too. Yes. Definitely teach yes. them affirmations because if they, can, if they can actually start to do affirmations at a very young age, they won't get to that difficult spot yes. of when people say things, you know, internalizing them. So and affirmations is, is pretty much just like a sentence that they can say to themselves, like instead of saying, I'm stupid, what would they do? They exactly. would just turn it around. They want to they say it present tense. So mm -hmm. I am, not I will. Okay, I, I am. am. Yep. Preferably in the mirror. Mm. Say it with conviction and say it often. Brilliant. I love that. I love that. And, and I think we all can can give ourselves this dose of positive positivity every single day. Absolutely. And accountability partners really help. I have a good friend uh, that her and I on Facebook Messenger each morning, we send each other one single heart because when you send one single heart, it bubbles up as it's many hearts. Oh. So when we do our morning affirmations, like if she sends me her heart and I open it up and I'm like, oh, this is so nice. If I didn't do mine yet, I do the right way because, you know, we'll let ourselves down before we'll let somebody else down. Yeah, you're right. So Absolutely right. I don't right. want to disappoint her, so I will send her my heart. I will do my affirmations right away. That's such a lovely idea. Really lovely. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. That's inspiring me now because I, I actually been asked whether I want to be an um, accountability partner to someone else who wants to actually leave her job in a couple of months. And obviously there's lots of work to be done and quite a journey. So that's giving me an idea because I, I was like, well, how can I be best? Because obviously I don't want to sort of beat, beat, you know, beat you up for not doing things. It's about giving you some positive encouragement. And that is just a wonderful thing to do, just to send their heart and say, you know, how are you doing today? Are you do are we on track? <laughs> yeah. Simple and it's positive. Fabulous. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you to the audience for watching and for, for sharing this as well. I guess 
Thank you, Sandra, so much. Um, lots of love to you. Um, yeah, and then thank you so much for the audience for tuning in. And, you know, if you feel anyone, you know, could really be, um, you know, needing this, this sort of boost and wanting to find out more about, you know, how they can reach for greatness in their life, then please, please share this stream with them. Um, you know, it will be available on this business page for the next 30 days, and then it will be moving into the paid membership area, which is called the Greatness Club. And you can find more um, information about the Greatness Club, Club <laughs> on the link above, which is right under my name. It is, uh, again, I'm gonna just read it, Le learn more about .info greatness club and i'll just share that quickly into the comments um for you and i'm not even sure if you can click on the link from the comments but i'll do it anyway so you've got it there um so i'm just going to do a bit of a recap um because it's been an amazing afternoon and once again i would like to thank all of the amazing women speakers that were on today for the time the effort for the wisdom and you know it's for me it's a journey as well just to listening to them and just you know being part of this and i'm so super grateful for that as well so i'm going to go through just a bit of a summary and um obviously want to make sure that you know you can link up with each of the ladies so we started off i was i was talking a little bit about the greatness club in the beginning and how reach for greatness came all about and what my vision is and i said you know the more people that join the greatness club the more people will see all these wonderful trainings will have access to the speakers as well we have weekly trainings inside and what is so so different from any other membership clubs is that literally we're going to talk about all different areas in life so it's not just about building a business it's also about your family your mindset um love relationship um food exercise i'm going to bring in so 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 many experts that will help you in all areas of life and you know it's going to be like a netflix channel literally where you can tune in and you can just choose pick and choose what you want to learn about and you know and it's always there for you right so all the trainings and there's exercises worksheets whatever you know you want you can also give me feedback and say what what are the things that you want to see in the club so this is like a really a fluid project where we all are coming together as women reaching for greatness. And the ultimate for me in terms of reaching for greatness is 10% of all the proceeds are going to charity. And um, just yesterday we made our first donation to a fantastic course, um, which is Sister Seth, who is running a um, women's and a girls school in Pakistan and you know, she's so wonderful what she does and um, we're following her story on Facebook as well she just rescued a nine-year-old girl who was literally um, left to die by her parents because she had a, a really horrible burn and she was like literally um, locked into this room left to die and she took her and took her to hospital and today she was posting um, about this girl and it's just so wonderful to be able to help in that sense so this is for me it's completely it's not just business you know it's about really helping truly helping the community and reaching out and even if we can't stop war it's about us you know being like coming together and reaching for greatness in your in our own little environments and and that will have massive ripple effects around every all the people that we touch right and as adi would say because she was so you know she's she she was telling me about you know how all the energies are interconnected and i know we can send love, healing love and there's so much power we all are connected um in this universe so thank you thank you so much i'm just feeling a little bit in a way i'm i'm feeling like excited but then also quite exhausted because i got so much learning out of this and so much like reflection i want to do after after these these sessions and i think it will just help so many other women so please please do share these um videos as well and reach out to those that haven't you know that really need it because i do know there are so many women out there in the world that do truly need this and zoe you're so wonderful we did some wonderful salsa dancing we started off with terry you know we were talking terry is like she just says it how it is right we you know don't settle for being mediocre just do who you know do the things that make that, that make most sense to you in life and don't think you, you know, you got to be boxed in and having to go to work and doing this job. So it's literally you talking like we just threw all the, all the toys out the pram there. 
then I was talking to Vicky because Vicky is a guru when it comes to um, doing creating visibility online. So if you are an entrepreneur and you um, haven't quite started your website or you want to actually improve on your website, you know this all this stuff around technology is quite a hurdle and it can be really really draining. Um, Vicky is the person who can really really help you to effortlessly and with ease build and help you build that website on your own you will have all the control or you will exactly know you know what to put on a home page or what to put on the about page and making sure that it really connects with your audience then we talked um to zoe and we did some fabulous salsa dancing and salsa she's the salsa queen and we we actually kind of learned the universal language of dancing and unlocking the inner powers of self-expression which is so true because you know, when we stop judging ourselves and we just do something new and we just sort of switch our ego off and we, we, you know, we can literally raise our energies and our vibes. And that's what we did by just expressing through our salsa dancing. So, um, and then Adi was talking about um, the, she's a teacher in, in vibrational mastery. So we actually learned more about what she does and how she actually connects, um, you know, clients, her clients with, with the, their higher self, I guess. And it's about letting the intuition sort of, um, yeah, let, let, let your intu intuition guide you on your journey in terms of who you are in this world and really unlocking that um, to become a conscious leader. So she really literally works around that and she's got a fantastic program um, that is really, really deep, deep work. So you can actually talk to Adi and I think her program's going to be um, closing in the next couple of days, if not, if not even today. So make sure you, you speak to her if that's something that you want to work on. And obviously, she, if you watch the replay in a few months' time, then Adi is always available to do some other program work with you as well. So that was lovely. And last but not least, it was amazing, Sandra, um, how to change your language um, so as to build your self-belief and self-confidence. And um, we were doing a little exercise with the, the boomerang. And, and I really enjoyed this by really looking at what are the things that you really want to hear um, and you know, to really boost your self-confidence and then what's your negative self-talk and how you can really, I guess, just, she was talking about this in, interrupting pattern, I guess it's about naming that monkey on your shoulder and say, look, shut up, it isn't quite like that. This is not the truth. And don't yet, don't tell yourself that you are stupid. And uh, what I've learned as well is to do this with my children um, because quite often young people can be vulnerable and obviously they hear things from their you know from school or f from other people and they just pick up things and they reflect it on themselves and which is not always the truth and they don't they don't understand what's the truth and what's not the truth so I think to to work through the, through this sort of model with them and help them also develop some positive affirmations every single day to tell themselves in the mirror like you know I'm not stupid I would say the opposite I'm I'm extremely smart I'm beautiful you know so that's how you can really really truly help yourself be great and reach for greatness but also you know affect your children or, or others around you and i hope i did this justice this little summary um i love love you all thank you so much for listening in and um you know i'd love you to come into the greatness club as well and really connect on a one-to-one -one. with me as well i mean you can always send me a message um on my um on my facebook business page you know um, to send me in a message if you've got any questions or if you need any help with any business related things like i do work with women in business um specifically um, in startup but also business growth so i'm kind of known i'm the project manager i'm helping you know ladies launch their programs doing webinars membership sites and i'm even mapping out their sales pages and all kinds of different funky things around um, sales funnels and email sequences and so on. So I, I'm that sort of, I'm the go-to person for that. But other than that, um, you know, if you're not building a business and if you want to, you know, connect with fabulous women here, if you want to be very close with the Reach for Greatness community and the TV and you want to see all the episodes um, and more, then please come and join the Greatness Club. So for now, I'm wishing you lots and lots of love. Sandra... Zoe is still here, fabulous, and um, I'm going to sign off. That's it. I'm feeling a bit sad, but 
you know, we're going to do this all over again because the next episode is on the 22nd of June. So if you would like to be notified of the next episode, there's also a link in the description. It's like a bit.ly link where you can sign up and you can get a reminder. And then next time I go live, I'll just include you and I'll say, look, this is the program. Come along, see the live. And obviously you'll also get the replay because that's the beauty about doing on um, Facebook lives and where you can always have the replays available if you can't be there live. So lots of love, ladies. Have a wonderful weekend and I will be here again in two weeks time. Same place, same time again, 12 o'clock UK till 3 p.m. I think it's got to be a bit earlier until about 2.30, 2 so 11, 11.30, but I will post the link. So love you all. Have a great day and a wonderful weekend. Bye.